Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal, in depth look at the all new 2015 Audi S3. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the S3. We'll start up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. As a courtesy, I'd like to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Auto Nation and their Audi Plano store located just outside of Dallas in Plano, Texas for providing us with the all new S3 featured in today's in-depth review. For more information on their dealership, which at the time of this video is under expansion and current inventory, you can check out their website provided in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let her run. Like many of Audi's newest products, the S3 also features a standard remote smart key access system, so you can lock and unlock the vehicle via the touch sensors on all four door handles. Just make sure you have the key fob in your pocket so the vehicle's proximity sensors can detect it, and to lock, just tap the little depressed portion on the handle, accompanied by one beep. After waiting a second, just grab the handle, there's a touch sensor located behind, and it automatically unlocks the vehicle. This Audi exclusive color on this S3 is known as Daytona Gray Pearl Effect, complemented nicely by a two-tone black and magma red premium leather interior. Along with the Smart Key Access System, to start the S3 you also have a remote push button ignition located in the center console by this red accented ring. Just put your foot on the brake and hit the button to start. S3 features variable electric assisted speed proportional rack and pinion power steering, routed through a more aggressive flat bottom three spoke leather wrapped steering wheel. It provides an excellent feel with robust bolsters at 10 and 2 and comfortable thumb rests at 9 and 3. Subtle touches of satin bright work and high gloss black trim wrap the multifunction controls on the upper spokes, with the single silver ring that circles the airbag cover all bringing together a modern look, while signature S3 badging highlights the lower spoke with red double accent stitching around the entire wheel. As far as the transmission, the sole option is a 6-speed double clutch automated manual gearbox dubbed S-Tronic that allows manual shifting availability via the console selector or by the paddles mounted behind the steering wheel. No manual transmission is currently offered in the states, but cars across seas come standard with a 6-speed manual. A sport mode, activated while in automatic mode, raises the shift points and adds dynamic throttle blips when downshifting and under harder acceleration little burps when you upshift. An important performance advantage is the standard Quattro all-wheel drive system, featuring a center differential with electronically controlled clutch pack and full locking ability for even distribution of power to both the front and rear open differentials. This S3 features the optional 19-inch performance package which, in addition to larger wheels, also adds Audi's magnetic ride control. Working in tandem with the drive select system adjusting the steering, throttle, engine sound, transmission and suspension relative to three different modes, from comfort and auto to the more aggressive dynamic and individual function. 
Dynamic yields the stiffest steering and suspension settings for a tighter, more agile drive with less body roll and harder cornering. The car accelerates with more aggression and the transmission shifts even quicker with notable increases in vehicle sound thanks to an intake sound generator that pipes in more growl and a standard quad exhaust out back. As you would expect, the ride quality takes a slight penalty with the firmer suspension, but I didn't think it was a big difference as the magnetological shock soaked up the bumps and maintained a level composure. The S3 drives like a small car should. The steering is relatively light and responsive, making the car feel nimble, especially in tighter areas. More steering resistance can be dialed in if desired with dynamic mode as comfort can be a little bit light at times. The steering still remains smooth and doesn't transmit too much feel and vibration from the road. So I'm going to flip on the automatic LED headlamps, rear fog lamps, and the hazards. All four windows are fully automatic. And we'll check out the exterior. For 2015, Audi is bringing us an all-new A3 lineup. Previously only offered as a five-door hatchback or sportback, the A3 Trio now incorporates a convertible, sportback, and sedan. With increasing sizes and price tags of previously small offerings such as the A4, BMW 3 Series, and Mercedes C-Class, Audi is stepping up to the plate and bringing a relatively affordable platform to this new small premium segment that blends excellent quality, efficient design, and better performance putting added focus towards the sedan as the next big competitor to the Mercedes CLA. BMW has also begun dipping their feet into front-wheel drive recently and will be introducing a front-wheel drive 1 Series sedan, not related to the rear-wheel drive 2-door introduced in 2008. It's likely to hit the market probably within the next two years or so. The Audi A3, between front and all-wheel drive, three engine choices including a revised base 1.8 liter turbo 4, 2 liter turbo diesel, or turbocharged 2 liter gas unit, allows for a lot of selection based on your needs and preferences. For a dose of real performance, this year Audi also introduces the S3, a higher performing variant of the A3 sedan that packs more power, a more capable suspension, and an aggressive design packed into a relatively small package. While all available in both 3- and 5-door hatchback configurations overseas, and the option of a manual, the S3 will only be offered as a sedan with the S-Tronic gearbox in the United States. Now representing one of the most affordable and smallest offerings in the Audi lineup, the A3 and subsequent S3 are built on top of the latest MQB platform, also shared with the new 2015 Volkswagen Golf. In efforts of helping keep costs down, the majority of the body panels are steel, aside from an aluminum hood. Aluminum fenders are unique to the A3 Sportback. The rest of the suspension components relate somewhat to the Golf's design, but have unique aluminum components and special tuning to help deliver the signature Audi feel, especially with the available magnetic ride control. In testing, the S3 also actually performed marginally better than the larger S4 really due to its smaller, more nimble design and lower curb weight. Currently, the S3 is designed to compete with the Mercedes CLA 45 AMG. They're both turbocharged, all-wheel drive sports sedans based on their entry-level front-wheel drive counterparts and offer comparable performance. Comparing dimensions, the S3 is 8.8 .8 inches shorter in length, 0.9 inches shorter in height, 0.7 inches wider, and has a 2.7 inch shorter wheelbase. Depending on your equipment options, it's also about 200 pounds lighter. With the S3, you receive quite an upgrade in terms of styling and aggression that blends nicely with the rest of Audi's S portfolio. Beginning with the front, Audi's signature single frame grille receives what looks like twin spoke polished horizontal slats, an S3 badging to the left of the four rings. If equipped, the adaptive cruise sensor would be located in the bottom center of the grille. The lower fascia projects out further with polished center air splitter, while the outer edges contain gaping air intakes with polished trim that mimic the grille and headlamp design. The LED headlamps make a dramatic visual statement when compared to the standard units. Across the sides, the rockers project out further and the wheels are unique. The mirrors are finished in satin silver as you would see in typical Audi S and RS vehicles. 
In back, just like the standard car, there are dual exhaust outlets, but the S3 is finished with polished quad pipes and a more aggressive dark grey lower air diffuser. Other than that, a subtle deck lid spoiler adds an additional sportive touch. In general, the new A3 is an attractive car, almost reminiscent of a shrunken A4. The angular front and rear lights work well with the car's proportions, while dramatic body creases give it a sense of motion and performance. At the end of the day, it could still be described as relatively understated, but definitely modern and fresh. The S3 carries two different alloy wheel options specific to the vehicle, with the standard size being 18 inch in diameter. This S3 has the upgraded 19 by 7.5 inch twin 5 spoke wheels front and rear. They're wrapped in 235-35 Continental Conti Sport Contact Summer Performance tires. As far as the brakes, the S3 carries four wheel internally ventilated discs measuring 13.4 inches in front with two piston fixed calipers and 12.4 inches in the rear with single piston sliding calipers. With this setup, they're likely able to stop the car from 60 miles an hour in just over 100 feet. Underneath, the S3 is supported by a fully independent coilover suspension that consists of McPherson struts in front with aluminum thrown in and a multi-link design out back. In addition to the optional Audi Drive Select system with the driver adjustable three-mode adaptive magnetor logical dampers. Overall length is 175.9 inches with a width of 70.7 inches and a height of 54.8 inches on a 103.6 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight as you see here is around 3,450 pounds. The Audi S3 derives its performance from an upgraded version of the standard A3's 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder. In addition to new exhaust valves, the modified power plant also contains reinforced connecting rods, crankcase, new pistons, and a new cylinder head, none to mention more turbo boost and a larger intercooler. It packs direct injection, dual variable valve timing, double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and a compression ratio of 9.3 to 1. The block is made of iron while the heads are aluminum. It puts out a total of 292 horsepower at 5400 RPM and 280 pound-feet of torque at 1900 RPM, with a red line of 6500 RPM. That's an increase of 72 horsepower and 22 pound-feet of torque over the entry 2.0-liter A3. With the S3's standard launch control system, Audi claims the S3 can achieve 60 miles an hour in an impressive 4.7 seconds. Top speed is governed to 155 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, with a 14.5 gallon tank and required premium fuel, the S3 is estimated to achieve between 23 miles to a gallon in the city and 31 on the highway. Audi has done a splendid job on the A3's interior. It looks more upscale and modern, is covered in soft touch plastics and padding, and even features the latest forms of Audi's MMI connectivity and infotainment system, now with 4G LTE connectivity. Even though the A3 is the smallest, most affordable model, it still represents top-notch build quality for the class. Everything feels solid and well-made, with subtle touches of brushed aluminum and bright work found throughout. Leather upholstery is standard, as is rain-sensing wipers, a prominent sunroof, and more. The S3 receives unique goodies such as the steering wheel, instrument cluster, and seats like you saw a little bit earlier. The seats that you see in this S3 are the standard offerings, with good lateral support up top and down below, standard power adjustments as well as 4-way power lumbar. You can also opt for an upgraded sports seat that's a little bit more robust and has diamond quilted leather accenting. As you can see here, you can also opt for two-tone black and red leather, there is adjustable thigh support, adjustable headrests, and adjustable seatbelts. Attention to detail is pretty good too. I like the curved seat inserts and how the backrest bolsters extend out across your shoulders. The S3 logo is embossed on top, while the seat is accented in red double stitching. The seatbelts are adjustable and the headrests also adjust both vertically and telescopically. LED illuminated aluminum door sill entry guards, aluminum sport pedals, and a manual tilt telescoping flat bottom steering wheel. Knee airbags are standard, your lighting controls to the left, and a full soft padded dash broken up by brushed aluminum trim, circular air vents, and more. All finished off with a full black headliner and the standard glass sunroof like I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds.
there is a rev limiter in park and neutral around 4,000 RPM. A 10 speaker audio system is standard, but for that extra punch, there's also an optional 14 speaker 705 watt Bang & Olufsen surround sound system. Audi's MMI interface, displayed on a hideaway 7 inch LCD screen, has also received full refresh for the 2015 A3, making it more intuitive, more interactive, and modern. We'll highlight all of the features in just a second. side curtain airbags with padded A pillars, grip handles up top, and padded visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. Your rear view mirror is manually dimming, while on the top stack you have the microphones for your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, interior illumination, and controls for your automatic sunroof. A little wind deflector automatically pops up. If you want to block out some of the sun, just pull up the sunshade. It still allows a little bit of light to come in, but at a much reduced rate. While it looks somewhat familiar, the MMI interface receives a host of updates including this new small car design used in the A3. It incorporates the touchpad on top of the rotary wheel that not only works to control the navigation such as writing letters, numbers, and scrolling the map, but can also be used to swipe through albums and other features when an iPod is connected. To either side of the rotary knob, the silver quadrant buttons remain, but replacing the rest of the buttons are two convenient toggle switches located just ahead of the controller stack for the main system functions. The vehicle also has the ability to access internet features and real-time Google Maps through the 4G LTE connectivity system, and the SIM card is located in the glove box. The first feature we'll check out is tone, so the vehicle's audio settings, not only for the radio, but the different vehicle systems such as nav and more. The radio screen is pretty easy to understand overall, using the quadrant buttons to go between the four main menus, such as the controls, highlighting your preset stations, going between FM, AM, standard satellite radio, HD radio, and different sound settings. Next, which we're currently using at the moment, is your media options. Right now I have a CD in the glove box mounted CD drive. It shows the different songs, you could change the source, including Jukebox, which is the built-in hard drive, SD card, hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio, Wi-Fi, and more. Your navigation displays in a high-res display, houses all of your destination, traffic, all that kind of stuff in the different quadrant positions, activated via the silver buttons on either side of the rotary knob like I showed you earlier. Within the destination input, everything's pretty easy to understand overall, you can access your real-time traffic updates, and a whole lot of detailed settings corresponding to the way you want your map to display, and changing your Google map view from like standard to satellite view. 
With the Audi Connect system, there's a whole host of different features that you can use with your smartphone and internet connectivity, such as Car Finder, Picture Destination, which uses geo-tagged photos for navigation inputs instead of actually putting in destinations, local Google search, concierge services, and so much more. When you go up to the car screen, you can set individual parameters within Audi Drive Select, customize car systems, and bring up the integrated owner's manual that actually features video demonstrations on how to use all of the available options. The presentations are easy to understand, relatively concise, and have good audio quality to them. Audi brings advanced technology to the driving experience, and the multimedia interface, or MMI in the A3, provides an intuitive interface between the driver and the technology they need. The MMI provides control of navigation, Bluetooth, telephone, media options, and more with an interface that adapts to the function being controlled. The main controls are on the center console. To Back within the car screen, if we click on the car systems, it actually allows you to personalize many different aspects within the vehicle from lighting to locking, driver assistance features, and more. And what's nice about this refreshed MMI interface is that little 3D model of the car that rotates, twists, and turns to highlight whatever that you're currently using or trying to figure out at the moment. When we're back in the main screen up at the top, you'll see time and setup MMI. Time, of course, is setting your clock, and setting up MMI is like the personalizable options for the main system itself. The row of buttons here correspond to the Audi Drive Select system like we talked about earlier, your parking sensors, hazards, traction control, raising and lowering the screen, And down beneath that is your standard electronic automatic climate control system with dual temperature adjustments, fan speed in the middle, different zones, three-stage heated seats for both sides, front and rear defrost, and recycling. Small bit of storage down beneath the 12-volt power outlet, two adjustable cup holders, all of the command system controls like we talked about earlier, and the padded center console with red accent stitching. A modest mass space down below, you have your media input for your iPod integration, as well as a USB port for charging items. As far as the steering wheel, the left hand side corresponds to your driver information system that shows up in the digital display in the middle there. The right hand side corresponds to checking your navigation commands, your voice commands, bringing up the different drive select modes, and the radio volume. As far as the voice commands, help. Many functions of the MMI can be operated quickly and easily with the speech dialogue system. You can interrupt the voice output of the system at any time by pressing the talk button in order to say a new command. You can always say cancel or help. Press and hold the talk button to cancel a speech dialogue. Please cancel. Your wiper stock is off to the right whereas your high beams, parking, and turn signals to the left. Cruise control is in the bottom stalk there. As far as the driver info system, you use the top button here to scroll through the different menus, such as the vehicle settings, media, telephone, and navigation. Use the wheel to scroll between some extra sub-menus, such as your trip computer, fuel data, songs, this button brings up some more detailed menus, like you can bring up a lap timer, the digital speedometer, an efficiency program, and more. Change the modes. Pretty simple overall. Alrighty. We got to shut her down. And check out the back seat. Being that the A3 now represents Audi's smallest sedan offering, you would expect it to have a smaller rear seat than the larger A4, and it does. That's not to say that it's not accommodating, but people around 6 feet may feel cramped out back. The A3's styling more closely follows the typical sedan roofline and therefore feels roomier in my opinion than the Mercedes CLA with its sloped back coupe-like roofline. The environment is still nice for rear seat occupants with the padded materials, brushed aluminum trim, some air registers down below, and the leather seats and the sporty accenting. You can sit four adults relatively comfortable in the interior depending on your height, but in a pinch you can also sit three people in the back with a fully adjustable headrest. 
If you need some extra storage space, you can also fold down the seats to pass through the trunk. It's a little tighter climbing into the back seat for taller people, but the overall interior still evokes a nice solid feeling you'd expect from an Audi. Overall interior space for a comfortable seating position for myself up front, I'm around 5'10", 5'11", or so, and with these handy little cutouts in the back of the seat, I probably have about an inch or so of leg room and maybe half an inch or so of headroom, depending on where you put it. If you put it all the way towards the back, my head's just barely starting to graze the ceiling. Luckily, even though it has a sunroof and everything, there's, the mechanicals only extend back this far, so they cut out the headliner a little bit here, so you do have a lot more wiggle room towards the middle portion. Seat comfort's not too bad, really. You have some modest bolstering down below here, some extra definition across the sides, and a little bit of lower back support. You do have a padded armrest that comes down here, you can flip up for a little bit of storage or reveal two cup holders. If you need some extra storage space, there's a ski pass through in the middle here. You would just grab the handle, go ahead and fold it down, yield in a flat space, and then it all folds up in one unit. You can sit three people back here with an adjustable third headrest, extra seat belt, but it's going to be a little bit cramped for someone of my height, well, a lot of cramped. <laughs> You're most likely going to have to leave the middle here for someone like a child that has shorter legs just because of the taller drivetrain hump here. As far as amenities, you have two air registers down below here, reading lamps up top, two grip handles, coat hooks up top, and coat hooks in the top of the B pillar. Of course, side curtain airbags, and you do have some small quarter windows in the back for better visibility. So let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? To open up the trunk, you can either do it inside the vehicle or via the remote fob. It's also an easy opening trunk, so it basically pops itself without having an auto open or close feature. The trunk arms are nicely hidden from view, so they won't impede on your cargo space. It's around 10 cubic feet overall, there's some cargo tie downs up top, your spare tire located down below, and some little cubbies off either side, not to mention a first aid kit. If you need to fold the seats down, you can grab the little switch on either side of the rear seats and fold it down flat for a loading space all the way to the front seats. The passenger seat also features the same power and manual adjustments that you find on the driver's seat, including the manual thigh support. You do have a locking glove box. It has a pretty good amount of space overall. Houses your SD card inputs, CD player, and some illumination. It's also lined in felt. With rising sizes and rising prices, it's nice to see smaller, more affordable models being introduced on the regular, especially ones that boast a premium image and subsequent feel to back it up. With high octane variants being introduced, it simply sweetens the pot for the everyday car enthusiast. 
Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all-new 2015 Audi S3. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.